Okay, so we just had the midterm. Now we get to move on to more of the application. So like the physiology part of AMP type thing. But again, this is biochem. But at this point now, um, we get to apply everything that we've learned. So uh, we're gonna be able to combine it with some of our anatomy and physiology and figure out the actual biochemistry of the functionality of the body instead of just uh, like formulas, et cetera. So for chapter 13, we are gonna start with carbohydrates. So let's apply it. Paula, who is a diabetes nurse, teaches Kate to test her blood glucose levels before and after a meal. Paula explains to her that her pre-meal number should be 110 megaliters per deciliter or milligrams per deciliter or less. And if it increases by more than 50 milligrams per deciliter, she needs to lower the amount of carbs that she consumes. So what are carbs? Uh, carbs are a major source of energy from our diet. They're made from the elements of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they're also called saccharides. And saccharides means sugar. So, you know, sometimes you hear sugar called saccharin. Uh, so that's where the saccharide, right? And um, I say carbs are my favorite food group. <laughs> but this is anything that tastes amazing. So, like, your um, pastas are carbs. Anything with sugars, right? So potatoes, pastas, breads, um, yeah, I I say that the um the most uh, well-rounded meal is a Snickers bar <laughs> because you have carbs, you have fats, and you have proteins. So those are your three food groups. But that's just a little joke that I say. Okay, so anyway, uh, carbs are a major source. They're uh, ma basically the big thing is, and this is kind of where the biochemistry um, comes in, is their carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Okay, so we're going to be able to learn how to classify a monosaccharide as an aldose or a ketose and indicate the number of car carbon atoms. Okay, Sophie's deciding to say hi. I just got back from up north, <laughs> so she was mad that we were gone all weekend. All right, so carbs, such as glucose, are produced in photo or by photosynthesis in plants. But since we are not plants, we cannot do photosynthesis. Um, they're synthesized in plants from carbon dioxide. Now, I know that this is going to sound really silly, but take a minute to register CO2 versus CO, right? So I know that sometimes your brain just registers it as CO. And remember carbon monoxide, mono meaning one, di meaning two. Carbon monoxide is the deadly toxin where carbon dioxide is normal that we breathe it out, okay? So anyway, carbs again are synthesized in plants from carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sun. And they are oxidized in living cells to produce your carbon dioxide, which is gonna be our waste our water as well as energy. So this is a really common formula that you're going to be able to, or that you're going to see a lot. So this one I would actually probably memory, memorize. But 6 CO2s plus 6 waters plus energy, which would be our ATP or you know the food that gets converted into ATP through photosynthesis again only for plants because we don't do photosynthesis um, makes us glucose C6H12O6 and 6O2s so then um, the glucose can go into glycolysis be broken down um, you know through the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain in order to make us energy okay but here is your overall again for energy coming in through photosynthesis converting carbon dioxide and water into carbs and energy so my favorite animal here except for when they break fingers, would be the horses seeing, showing this. All right, so types of different carbs. So again, I've said from the very beginning of this course, make sure that you look for your root words. My niece made fun of me again this weekend for my pronunciation. So root words, but I always call them root words. Anyway, uh, pronunciation. So the types of carbs are mono, meaning one, di, meaning two, poly, meaning multiple. So mono, Saccharides. Remember, we just learned that saccharide, saccharide, uh, saccharin is sugar. So the monosaccharides, those are going to be the simplest of our carbs. Our disaccharides are only going to be two of those monosaccharides connected together. And then our polysaccharides are going to contain many. So again, you can see here the picture of monosaccharide. You don't have to break it apart using water. So hydrolysis, hydrolysis, hydro meaning water, to lice mean to break apart. So the hydrolysis is going to break those bonds down to the constituent 
um, singular molecules. But since mono only has one, we can't break it down for hydrolysis. We're going to break it down during glycolysis. Um, but our disaccharide, di meaning two, you can break it down into constituent monosaccharides through the hydrolysis reaction, hydro, water, meaning lysis, breaking apart. And then the polysaccharides, again, you can just see that you have a very long string here of um, the monosaccharides combined together to make a poly, meaning one, and then it can undergo that, go that hydrolysis reaction to break down into the constituent single monosaccharides. So these monosaccharides that we are talking about, they consist of three to eight carbon chains with one carbon in a carboxyl group or carbonyl group, okay? Carboxyl, carbonyl, same thing, okay? And these also consist of an aldehyde group, and these are classified as aldoses. They can contain a ketone group, wouldn't, those would be uh, classified as ketoses, okay? Um, and all, uh, they all have hydroxyl groups on all carbons except for the carbonyl axis. Okay. So you can see the aldehyde is highlighted here, and so that's because it has an aldehyde is going to be like an example of erythrose or aldose, where if you have a ketone, the CO, okay, connected to a more complicated tail, okay, that's going to be your ketone, and this would be uh, erythrulose or a ketose, okay, so this is just different ways to break down the classifications of monosaccharides. So um, the different types, okay? Monosaccharides are also classified by the number of carbons. So again, look for those root words, okay? Triose, tri means three. Tetra, tetros, four. Penta, the pentagon, five sides, five carbons. Hexose, six. So just whenever you're in doubt, break it down to those root words, okay? So an aldopentose would be a five carbon saccharide with an aldehyde group. Because the aldo is telling you the aldehyde group, and then the pentose, meaning the five carbon atom. Okay, a keto hexose, look for that hexose, meaning six, and then the keto being the ketone group. Okay, all right. So, looking at this a little bit more, what are different types of monosaccharides in picture form? And so you can see that you have your glycerol aldehyde, which would be the aldo triose. So, the aldo group. And then tri meaning three. You have a threeose, okay, the aldo group with uh, four carbons. Ribose, one, two, three, four, five, okay, with the aldo group. And then the this is your uh, your keto, okay, with one, two, three, four, five, six sugars. Okay, so let's apply this. So identify A and B either as aldo or keto and as tetros, pentose, or hexose. Okay, pause me and come back. All right, what did we get? So for A, that's going to be the aldose, right, because it has the aldo group, and then hexo because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, where this one has that keto group, and it has one, two, three, four, five pentose carbons. All right, great job, guys.